Well, hello from Kenya. And as many of you who will have joined me yesterday on Instagram and Facebook, when I was chatting to the nutritionist and fitness instructor Zana Morris, and we touched a little bit on intermittent fasting. She was saying that she doesn't eat breakfast. Her first meal of the day is around 11 o'clock, 12 noon, which is the same for me as well. So I thought I'd just come and talk for a few minutes about some of the benefits of intermittent fasting, what it is, how to do it, how it works. And intermittent fasting, you might see it written as IF sometimes, or it's also known as time-restricted eating, T-R-E, is when you basically eat within a certain window. So you have a long period of time where your gut is resting. So it's not having to digest any food, and this has been linked to all kinds of health benefits from improving our immune system to weight loss to reducing insulin sensitivity so many things cognitive function energy and one of the reasons for this is that it gives the body and the gut and the gut microbes particularly time to rest and to recharge so how long do you have to go before you have your first mouthful of food in the day that's the kind of the crucial question isn't it well, studies show that actually even just 12 hours, a 12 hour gap is sufficient to have some benefit. So that would mean that you have your last mouthful of food, say at eight o'clock in the evening, and then your first mouthful of food at eight o'clock in the morning. So you've got that 12 hour gap with nothing. And nothing really does mean nothing. So it means not only no food, but nothing that your gut is going to process. So no milky drinks, no cappuccino, no cup of tea with milk in the evening, no hot chocolate, no wine, no alcohol, because the sugars in that get processed by the gut. So it really is just, you know, black tea, black coffee, herb tea, water, that's it. Nothing else that your gut can process. So for most people, most experts talking about time-restricted eating, they tend to use a 10-hour window. So, and that's the one that I tend to go with. So for example, I find that having my first mouthful of the day around 11 o'clock in the morning, so it's like a brunch, brunch type meal, um, and then my last mouthful is tending to be around nine o'clock in the evening. And of course you can play around with that. You know, if you're going out, if you're eating late, and you're you know, not finishing till say 10 o'clock at night, then you would say, okay, then I'm gonna stretch it out. I'm not gonna have anything um, before midday. And I know it sounds scary, missing breakfast because we're so used aren't we? we've had it drilled into us three meals a day you know breakfast like a king lunch like a queen supper like a pauper all those sort of things that we hear about but actually we can survive really well and really healthily on essentially two meals a day you know you can have a big brunch and then an early supper and that's it and as long as you keep your sugars low you're not going to get any spiking of insulin you're not going to feel hungry so the chances are you'll lose weight and you'll feel fitter for it so i just wanted to share with you um, some studies that i was looking up really to support this and a lot of people are as i say go on the 10 hour window eight hours is is kind of a bit more extreme but you can um, and there have been some really interesting studies showing that they really do things like reduce cholesterol, reduce, reduce insulin, um, people lose body fat, they have improved sleep, they have improved alertness during the daytime, they feel better, you know, your mood is lifted, you're producing perhaps more of the serotonin and, and dopamine in the brain that our gut microbes are doing, there's improved liver function. Interestingly for women, there's also a lower risk of breast cancer. So really interesting uh, studies looking at time-restricted eating. So I think the thing to do is to give it a try. That whole thing about getting over not having breakfast, I know I did it myself and it really is a mind over matter thing. You just have to tell your brain, it's fine. I had a big supper, I'm not starving. I'm going to survive for a few hours. Sips of water, black tea, black coffee, stay hydrated, that's a real key to it. And you just switch your brain into not expecting that you're going to get up and immediately start eating. You don't need it. You genuinely don't need it. So obviously for kids and youngsters heading off to school, it's important to fuel them up 
absolutely and if you're pregnant or convalescing but for you know regular healthy adults this is something that is really good to try so key thing stay hydrated so that you don't get headaches from that you can have your black tea your black coffee um, and one of the things that I picked up on looking at the gut microbes, which I thought was really interesting, is that fasting affects our gut microbiota and particular things called sirtuins, which you may have heard me talk about before. These are things that are markers of longevity. So there's going to be an implication there in degenerative diseases. And also fasting regulates a particular microbe called Chris and Sonella. And this is one that regulates blood sugars. So again, this might be a reason why it's helping to control hunger pangs and helping us to lose weight as well. So I hope that's been interesting and uh, give it a try. Let me know. Pop a note in the comments below. Let me know how you get on. If you go on two meals a day, if you follow any kind of time restricted eating, whether it's a 12 hour gap, a 10 hour gap, an eight hour gap, perhaps you take a whole day and you fast. Um, a lot of people do that. It's in a lot of cultural traditions as well, but I'd love to hear how you get on with it. And I'll see you next time. Bye.